Well, Lane, thanks for sitting down with me for Raw Courage TV. I, uh, I've, there's so many questions I have to ask you because really I feel like you personify what it is to live courageously. Thank you. You know, I was, uh, I saw somewhere that you once said, you know, I'm not afraid of anything because when we fear things, we attract those things to us. So just share with me though, how have you overcome your fear, particularly when you go out in the middle of the ocean and you get taken out to, to, to surf one of those massive, massive waves? Well, I find we all know that fear immobilizes, immobilizes us. It, it stops us in our tracks. And I'm a lover of experience. I'm a lover of growth and improvement and development. And, and I love to discover and expand on my own self-definitions. And by confronting your fears and overcoming them, it allows you to do that. So I don't allow fear to stop me in my tracks very often. And when I do feel fear, I like to overcome it as, as quickly as I possibly can. So. I remember as a kid, I grew up in waves that were literally seat height, you know, a couple of feet from the ground. And I yep. remember riding waves like that and feeling fear, but I was more attracted to the experience than I was allowing the fear to prevent me from enjoying that experience. And so I learned from those early years that that's how you approach it. You focus on what you want as opposed to what you don't want. Yep. And most of us allow our fears to control us and and say, actually, this is not what you want. And so therefore, we live our lives according to what we don't want yeah. as according to what we do. So from going to, from riding two foot waves to 50 yeah. foot waves, it's the same mentality. It's focusing on the yeah. outcome that you desire and controlling the controllables. I know when I teach people to surf, I take them into the ocean. And of course, everyone's initial fear is sharks. And yeah. I just say, well, <laughs> Listen, you do attract what you fear. And the reason that you attract it is because your thought manifests your reality. So if you want to know what you want, have a look at what you've got. And if you don't want that any longer, then stop thinking about it yeah. and stop wanting it. Yeah, <laughs> so, so true. I don't fear sharks. I understand I'm in their, in their environment. And I understand that the ocean is a very humbling environment. It's, it's, a, it's a real humbling environment. It's a real equaliser. But when it comes to sharks, for example, I do everything I can to minimise my exposure to that. So if there's a shark alarm, I'll either get out of the water or we'll actually end up congregating into a pack. Yep. Um, if we know there's sharks around, then we'll either stay out of the water or uh, we'll just go and surf somewhere else. I don't surf on my own very often. Half my chances when I have someone else paddle out with me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and also, um, I acknowledge the fear to overcome it quickly. Yeah. I think the, the problem is when I walk someone to the edge and I go, what's wrong? And they go, I don't know. I say, well, we need to work that yeah. out. Because, you know, it's so true. You know, if we don't own our fears, they own us. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, and when you were saying, you know, we focus on what we don't want, I think, you know, too often we're driven by what scares us versus what inspires us. From your, yes. you know, being, a, you know, really young, riding the waves, yeah. you know, do what you love. That should matter more than what you're afraid of. And I'm actually inspired by feeling fear. I'm inspired yeah. by being a little bit scared. I'm inspired by stepping outside of my comfort zone and expanding my definition of self and becoming yeah. a whole lot more, a whole lot more um, able. Yeah, <laughs> doing. Things. Do you know what another thing just that really struck me then as you were talking? You know, you you didn't start with the big waves that no. you've those huge waves that I know you've you've surfed in Hawaii. Yes. I think it was. Yes, yeah. You started with the little ones, and I feel like you know, as when it comes to being courageous in our lives. It's not about starting with the great big scary things. It's starting with the little things. And because we build courage in increments. Yeah, you know, exactly. We, we work up, you know, if you were going to take me out surfing, you wouldn't stick me out there on these. I certainly wouldn't take you out in the ways of the ceiling. No, <laughs> no. I'd probably like the little two foot as much. Yes, thing. yep. So when you see other people around you who, and I'm sure you do in, in your work, because I know you do a lot of key keynoting, you've done coaching with the Australian Olympic team even, yeah. you know, and the fear rises up. What have you seen for others has got in their way of them dealing with it in, a, in an effective way? The, the simple, most effective way to overcome your fear is awareness. That's yeah. how actually you live your life. If you're aware of how you're thinking, yeah. how you're feeling and how it's going to, how it's going to, what it's going to result in, then you're in yeah. control. And the thing is that I've seen athletes, especially at the Olympic Games, it was fascinating how many athletes perform out of fear. And they don't have the courage to confront it. They actually allow the fear to stop them. Really? Yeah. You know, so they'll get so close to achieving their ultimate goal of winning a contest or winning a, winning a tournament, and then they go, oh, no, I could win. Well, these are the world's most elite athletes. They have actually made the Olympic team. Yeah. They were at the Olympics in London when you were there as, you know, as, as one of the coaches, really, to help support them. Mm. 
I would have thought they would have had to have learnt those things by the point that they got to, you know, yeah, the we're... pinnacle of yeah, their Yeah, but their it's field. funny, you know, you think... Uh, well, we're projecting our own expectations onto these athletes, but you think they would know these things, yeah. and they do know these things, yeah. but they, sometimes they just forget or yeah. they choose not to utilise the tools that it, they have just, or they just don't know. It just shows, though, yeah. our emotions trump our intellect. Like yes. We can get things intellectually but still be absolutely paralysed yeah. or, you know, or ultimately sabotage ourselves because that fear is just gripping us, has such a grip on us. Yes. And, and, you know, it's fascinating. I had an experience that I can recall very clearly in my mind where I allowed my emotions to trump my intellect, and that was when I did Dancing with the Stars because I set a goal when I retired from the professional world tour that I love to challenge myself and step outside of my comfort zone. So I've to set, I had to set a realistic expectation and set an achievable goal for me to maintain that sustainable yep. success in my life. So the first goal was to do Dancing with the Stars. That became my that's first, pretty, my first challenge. Yeah, pretty very brave. brave, very courageous, very stupid. For, for uh, a surfer. You know. <laughs> exactly. So it goes against all my grains. And, uh, and I remember investing myself wholeheartedly into this whole thing. I thought it was a dance competition. I didn't realise it was a popularity contest. So no. I went into it with that same mentality. This is a competition and I need to do all the preparation, all the work, so I know when I get onto that dance floor, I've done everything I need yeah. to do for me to then be able to perform at my best. 25 hours of dance training a week. I just mm. committed myself to this thing. But then I would get onto the dance floor. I would step onto the dance floor and I would have this overwhelming sense of fear because I would look at the audience and I'd look at the cameras and the lights and the judges and I'd think of everyone watching at home and I would have this overwhelming fear because I thought that you thought that I thought I was a good dancer. So it was a complete self-sabotage moment. Yeah. And to prevent you from having a thought that I don't know whether you're having, but I really want you to like me. I really want you to enjoy this. I really want you to vote for me. I really don't want you to think that I think I'm any better than what I really am. So I'm so in fearful now. I'm so enshrouded yeah. in fear. Yeah. It's completely trumping my intellect. And so now I'm dancing through my head and through my yeah. heart. It was not yeah. fun to watch, let alone fun to perform. Oh, look. Oh. And you know how it is. When people are having fun doing what they're doing, you yeah. just naturally yeah. want to engage with it. Yeah, when they're absolutely. not, you just it's a train wreck. You can't take your eyes off it. But oh, So the last night I got it, I, I danced through my heart. I loved the experience yeah. and I was eliminated. <laughs> May have had something to do with the fact I had a disagreement with one of the judges the week before. Oh, okay. Anyway, doesn't matter.